At the beginning of the film, we see two girls, Hunter and Becky, who are stuck on a massive two zero meter high tower. They try to call for help, but their phones have no reception due to the high altitude. The worst part is that the tower is in the middle of a desert, making detection impossible. To make matters worse, vultures have begun attacking them, and if they fall asleep, they will fall directly to their deaths. The story then flashes back to Becky, her partner Dan, and her best friend Hunter Rock climbing. The three of them appear to be having a good time until Dan comes across a small hole and puts his hand inside to get a grip. But suddenly a bird emerges, causing him to fall and become entangled in the rope. Dan tries unsuccessfully to swing to the rock. Becky and Hunter also try to assist him, but the rope snaps and Dan falls to his death. The scene then shifts to 51 weeks later, and Becky is still haunted by the incident. She appears depressed and has been drinking excessively. Becky's father, James, is concerned about her and tries to persuade her to move on with her life, but she does not listen to him. One night, she considers taking her own life by consuming an excessive amount of medicine, but just as she is about to do so, she receives a phone call from Hunter after a long time. The next day, Hunter visits Becky and mentions her plan to climb the B67 TV tower, and she invites Becky to join her Becky, who has been in pain has no interest in doing it, but the next morning when she reminisces about her time with Dan, she changes her mind and decides to climb it for him shortly after they both make their way to the tower. As she scrolls through the photos, she notices one with a man's hand on Hunter. Becky inquires about the man, but the Hunter does not respond right away. Becky receives a phone call from her father, but does not pick up. After a long drive, they stop at a motel to spend the night. Over dinner, Becky learns that Hunter is now a vlogger and that she earns enough money to travel to new places. In the meantime, they notice the TV tower, which appears to be the fourth tallest structure in the United States. The next morning, Becky and Hunter get back into their car to continue their journey. Hunter starts driving and filming her vlogs, telling viewers about the 2,000-foot all tower. While concentrating on the vlog, they nearly collide with a truck. After a while, they arrive at the tower area but the gate is closed with a danger sign. Regardless, they decide to abandon their car and begin walking through the deserted land. On their way, they notice vultures eating animal flesh, which Hunter documents in her vlog and uploads the animal's photo on social media. They arrive at the tower a few moments later, and Hunter resumes her vlogging. On the other hand, Becky becomes terrified of climbing as she is reminded of her past, and she considers giving up, but Hunter persuades her to face her fears. Hunter then connects her rope to Becky's and begins climbing through the ladder inside the tower. The entire tower appears to be rusted, the ladder appears shaky, and the nut bolts are loose. While Becky is climbing, one of the metal rods of the ladder breaks, causing her to be terrified. Despite this, she gathers her courage and continues her ascent. Eventually, they reach the halfway point and notice that the city looks like a toy town. Becky is terrified by the wind height and rusted condition of the tower. She asks Hunter to return, but he simply tells her to keep going. As a result, they begin climbing the outside ladder, which appears to be even more dangerous than the previous one. Soon after, they notice discs on their way and must make their way from the side of the ladder. Hunter easily overcomes the obstacle and assists Becky in passing it. As they climb, the wind becomes stronger, making Becky even more terrified. When Hunter notices this, she scares her even more by shaking the ladder causing the nut bolts to loosen and one of them to fall out. Fortunately, this has no effect on the ladders, and the two of them continue to climb until they reach the peak and begin taking photographs. Becky then takes Hunter's hand in her own and slowly hangs herself from the tower's ledge. Hunter takes some selfies and pulls Becky up before the hands slip. After this, Becky blows away Dan's ashes and waves a final goodbye to him, creating an emotional moment for both of them. They decide to return, so they attach their harnesses and Becky goes first, but the ladder breaks as she climbs down, causing her to fall. Fortunately, Hunter grabs the rope and pulls Becky up after the near-death experience. They both laugh like maniacs, but their laughter quickly fades when they notice that the ladders are no longer there. They check their phone, but it has no signal. They also notice that their water and supply bag has fallen on the disc in the tower. They discover bin oculars and a flare gun, but they are rendered useless as a result. Becky panics, but Hunter calms her down by saying that the sound of the ladder falling must have been heard by someone. She also convinces Becky to wait until someone comes to their aid while the two are brainstorming ways to escape the situation. 
Hunter notices sees a large cut on Becky's leg from the previous fall, and after some time has passed, she ties her shirt around the wound. Becky begins interviewing Hunter, asking why she began vlogging. Hunter responds that she began vlogging because of Dan, raising suspicions in Becky's mind. A few hours later, Hunter checks her phone and recalls posting the animal's picture earlier. She believes there's a signal at a certain height. She gets an idea so she prepares a help post. She ties her phone with the rope and sends it as far down as she can, hoping it will receive the signal in her post. Hunter then slips her phone into her shoe, padding it with her socks and a push-up bra. After that, they throw the shoe and wait. Becky notices a 143 tattoo on Hunter's feet. It is revealed that Dan used the code 143 to express his love. A short time later, Hunter notices a man and a dog at the base of the tower. Their cries are not heard. We see that Hunter's phone has been destroyed, and the man prepares to leave. Becky throws both of their shoes in an attempt to catch the man's attention but fails. She then decides to use the flare gun, but Hunter stops her because the man won't notice the flare during the day. Meanwhile, they notice another man and discover that they have arrived for a party. They then intend to use the flare gun at night so that the men can easily notice it. Overjoyed, the men steal their car and drive away, breaking the girls from within. They now have to find a new solution quickly. Becky inquires about Hunter's tattoo, to which the latter reveals that she had an affair with Dan for six months. She then apologizes to Becky for falling in love with her guy and making a huge mistake. She claims she was drawn to Dan because, unlike other men, he used to listen to her. Becky is disappointed that her own friend and partner betrayed her. The next morning, Becky's phone alarm goes off, indicating that it has been 24 hours since they threw Hunter's phone away because they are extremely thirsty. Hunter decides to go down to the disc to get their bag. She ties one end of the rope to the tower and the other end to her own body and descends all the way down but is still unable to reach the disc. Hunter opens her harness, hangs on the rope with one hand, and swings to the disc. She retrieves the bag and drinks some water from it, then uses her selfie stick to hook the bag on the rope and cling to it. Becky pulls the rope while Hunter climbs, and she is almost to the top when her hands slip and she falls. Becky's heartbeat stops, and when she looks down, she is relieved to see Hunter still holding on to the bag. However, Hunter's hand is injured, so Becky uses all of her strength to pull her up. After a while, Becky writes a help note, attaches it to their drone, and decides to send it to the motel. Unfortunately, the drone is unable to travel far because its battery is running low, forcing them to bring it back after failing later that night. Becky has a terrifying dream about vultures devouring Hunter's body. She quickly awakens and realizes it was all a nightmare. The next morning, Becky realizes that they can charge the drone using the tower lights. She climbs up the pole and plugs in the drone's charger, but it's too loose, so she has to hold on to the charger until it's fully charged amidst the excruciating heat and constant attacks from nearby vultures. She stands firm, but in the process she drops the bag all the way down from the tower. Becky is tired and wants to sleep, but the hunter forbids her because vultures may attack her. Becky then asks for Hunter's shoe so she can throw her phone down one more time, but Hunter says she can't because her shoe is on her feet down on the disc. It's then revealed that Hunter couldn't hold on to the bag during the previous fall, so she fell on the disc and died. Becky simply pulled up the bag and has been surviving on her own since then. Unfortunately, she has been hallucinating Hunter's presence all night. Becky survives the storm and records a video message for her father in which she expresses her desire to return home elsewhere. The vulture notices Becky's defenselessness the next day and begins eating her wounds at the same time Becky holds the vulture and strikes its head against the metal surface, killing it. She then eats the vulture's flesh in order to survive upon generating some energy in her body. She ties herself with the rope and jumps down on the disc where Hunter's body is lying. Following this, she sends a message to James and plays. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the recap. Let us know in the comments what you thought. And while you're here, consider subscribing. We would love to have you as part of our community.